Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Aircraft carriers are gigantic floating cities with the ability to carry airplanes into battlefields. They are introduced with the need for military instruments to allow forces to have long-range capabilities and be present at a particular location for a prolonged period with limited logistic dependence. With aircraft carriers, the forces can operate independently for extended periods without having to contend with the host nation's regulations. A carrier is thus able to operate as an autonomous microcosm, since it has everything needed to operate internally, from food to fuel, from ordnance to supplies. This makes the aircraft carrier integral in carrying out missions of the U.S. forces successfully. However, Landing an aircraft on the deck of these carriers requires absolute attention to safety, and the United States forces have some simple but efficient methods of ensuring a safe landing in the middle of an ocean. Firstly, the carrier's deck is always checked to be free from what is known as foreign object debris, or FOD. Based on its name, FOD includes any object that does not belong to the airplane and the deck's runway. Their presence has the potential to cause damage to an aircraft and can injure aircraft personnel. The FOD is essential to the smooth working operations of the forces leads to increased maintenance and operating costs and, by extension, can pose a significant threat to the safety of airmen. In fact, the resulting damage due to FOD is estimated to cost the larger aerospace industry a colossal $4 billion a year. This phenomenon is even true for the naval forces, because something as small as a pebble, a nut, or a washer that is ingested in the engines is sufficient to require tens of thousands of dollars in repairs and human labor. The use of FOD walk-along and routine inspections by the sailors is one way the Navy handles this small issue that has huge, disastrous potential. At the end of the deck, the sailors line up uniformly across the width of the deck and proceed with a FOD walk to a predetermined stopping point. The sailors search for any foreign debris or objects they might come across while walking down the carrier deck during this process, picking them up as they go. This quick exercise aims to safeguard the Navy's equipment and aircraft from catastrophic occurrences. Another method used by the naval forces on board is a damage control system, which is known as the countermeasure washdown system. This system is a crucial defense component intended to mitigate damage and control the spread of hazards aboard the ship. It is a process in which the Navy makes use of seawater and aqueous film form, or AFF, to fight against chemical, biological, and radiological warfare. In case of a fire outbreak, the system can also use the combination of seawater and AFF to combat fires by smothering a flame's oxygen supply. The washdown system is usually a giant sprinkler system for the outside of the ship to take water directly from beneath the ship. This water is used to wash over contaminated areas on the ship. But one could wonder how planes take off from the short runway on the carrier deck. 
The U.S. Navy uses a steam-powered or electromagnetic catapult system to launch aircraft from the deck of an aircraft carrier. The electromagnetic system uses an armature, which is the portion of a catapult that an aircraft's launch bar connects to when it lifts off. This catapult system allows the aircraft to take off from a very limited amount of space and provide a form of takeoff assistance to the aircraft. It is very important to have proper maintenance of this system, and the sailors usually carry out several maintenance checks to ensure its good working condition. One of them is a check to ensure the cylinders of steam-powered launchers are properly aligned to prevent the scouring of their pistons. As cylinder maintenance is important to the steam catapult, so is armature maintenance crucial for the new generation of launchers that use electromagnetic systems. The armature is cleaned with the contact cleaner to remove any dirt, dust, oil, and any other contaminants. The commutator of the armature is then checked for any dirt and cleaned with the use of aluminum oxide paper before a final cleanup with the cleaner, and the armature is ready for use. The launch bar is permanently connected to the front of the plane's nose gear, and a holdback bar runs from the back of the plane's nose gear to the flight deck, where it is locked into the deck. The steam-powered catapult's pistons are locked in place to allow the cylinders to build up pressure. And once the proper pressure is reached, the aircraft, which is being held back by the holdback bar, is fired down the catapult. Both the shuttle and the plane are propelled forward by the pressure of the steam when the pistons are released, thereby also releasing the holdback. When the plane reaches the end of the catapult, the launch bar disconnects from the shuttle, releasing the plane to gain a vast speed of between 0 and 160 knots in just about 2.5 seconds. The catapult system also uses Jet Blast Deflectors, or JBD, behind the jet to protect other aircraft and personnel from exhaust blast damage. The JBDs are made of heavy-duty materials that are raised and lowered by hydraulic cylinders, or linear actuators. When not in use, the JBDs is a part of the carrier deck until the aircraft to be launched passes over them on the way to the catapult. When the aircraft is readied for launch, the JBD is raised to redirect the hot jet blast coming from the aircraft and to direct the high-speed wind produced by the engine exhaust, which can reach up to 120 miles per hour, hurricane speed. Indeed, the use of these jet blast doors reduces the possibility of danger to personnel and damage to other planes on the carrier. Although a catapult system is primarily used on aircraft, land-based catapults can also be used for testing and evaluation, but not for routine use. During this land-based test, the jets are launched by catapults and are recovered by using aircraft carrier-style arresting gear. Unlike a catapult found on an aircraft carrier, which runs down a track on the deck, the land-based catapult is based on a cable tow driven by a capstan, which is powered in turn by turbine engines. The entire arrangement would enable the aircraft to get into the air and land back at the base without the need for a lengthy, traditional runway. This test was conducted to access the performance limitations of the catapult systems 
and to provide better evaluation techniques for routine use on the carriers. In a similar vein, the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMALS, technology allows for the smooth acceleration of the aircraft at varying speeds, increasing the carrier's ability to launch aircraft in support of the military forces. Unlike the traditional steam-powered catapult, it relies on stored kinetic energy and solid-state electrical power conversion with less stress on the ship and its systems. EMAL system is technologically advanced and allows for a high degree of computer control, monitoring, and automation. With EMALS, the aircraft is attached to a shuttle that is propelled down the length of the catapult track by an electromagnetic field produced by linear induction motors. The motor generator stores the system's energy in the inertia of its rotor and releases the energy when the launch is initiated. The functionalities of EMALS were evaluated with dead load testing, where the launch system would shoot car-sized metal slugs off the carrier deck to simulate aircraft. The testing is carried out to prove reliability and to establish that the system works according to specification. Wow. The naval forces also use the electromagnetic system to produce what is known as the railgun. The railgun is a weapon that uses electromagnetic force to launch high-velocity projectiles. This railgun provides a huge attraction because it is hoped that it will fire several rounds more ammunition than the conventional naval gun shells, while reducing both the required size of each shell and the amount of dangerous explosive material carried on board ship. Railguns consist of two parallel metal rails, between which a projectile held in an armature is loaded to complete the circuit between these conductive rails. A vast number of electrical pulses are applied to create an electromagnetic field, which in turn produces a force that accelerates the projectile along the rails with very little recoil. The invention of this device further underscores the commitment of the naval forces to using technology to greatly help in achieving the mission of naval warfare. This warfighter game changer was tested at the Naval Service Warfare Center testing facility in Virginia. The system charges for a few minutes and fires in less than one second. The system is shielded so as not to affect shipboard controls and systems with the launched projectile traveling over 100 nautical miles at incredible multiples of the speed of sound. It has wide area coverage, impressive quick response times, and arms the forces with some high-tech lethality. It is intended to help in air defense, in cruise missile defense, as well as in ballistic missile defense. ranging from simple safety routines like the FOD exercise to a more complex defense mechanism like the railgun. The naval forces have surely invented efficient means of carrying out their tasks successfully with absolute guarantee of personnel safety. That's the end of this video. 
I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.